Hey friends, this is Jeremy. I'm broadcasting from the mountains of Judea. The world is changing. And I just wanted to share the vision that I understand from the prophets as they've shared our vision with us, but so many people um, haven't had the training or the time to ever learn the prophets of Israel. And I feel like now more than ever, the prophets will guide us. Everything is going to be all right. This should be a medicine now more than ever, people need a media diet. Don't just feed yourself scary stories and stupid YouTube videos. Try to be proactive in what you're listening to, into what you're watching. Choose nourishing media. Choose enlightening media. Choose holy media. And so this is my attempt to bring a little bit of light and healing into the world. Because everything that is happening now is meant to be happening now. Everything that's happening now is for the good. And it's very chaotic and no one likes chaos. But that is the order of the Bible. We begin in tohu vavohu. There is chaos and only from the chaos light emerges and then day and night and then the stars and the cosmos and then the earth. And then from the chaos of earth, somehow life emerges, but it's always from chaos. And so every transitional time is a chaotic time and the world is transitioning now. A new world is coming, a better world. But if you try to fight the change, you're fighting against reality itself and you will not win. This is the time to surrender to reality, to go with reality. If you know where reality is going, if you know where existence is heading, and the name of Hashem in the highest level, Shem Havaya, that is the name of existence because we understand as God is one that He is existence. And so where is existence going? And so if we know where it's going, we don't need to fight it. We need to ride the wave. We need to know that we're on a wave towards a better place. So this is the first of a series of ideas based on the writings of the prophets we are living through prophetic times now, and this is the time to harness the power, the comfort, guidance, and wisdom of the wisest and most moral men to ever live. So I'm going to release an organized audio series starting with the book of Joshua, but I'm also going to be releasing um, just insights into the Tanakh in general that are a little bit more random, just because there are some prophecies in some ideas that are critical for this time that people need to be studying about. They need to be praying about. Because now I don't think that our prayers are necessarily to change God's will, but rather it is a reflexive act. To pray in Hebrew is lehit palel, means we're doing something to ourselves. What are we trying to do to ourselves? We're trying to realign ourselves with reality. We're trying to realign ourselves with God's will because God's will will be done. And so if we are in line with his will, then <laughs> the wave won't crash on our heads. And so this is the beginning. But before we get there, there's a way to listen to this series. Um, you know, my show with Ari that I'll be releasing soon and my podcast with Tehila. You can do that watching the dishes and driving around and while you're exercising. But this is a series where I would encourage you to sit down, get comfortable, open up your Tanakh, breathe, listen, and really be present in what's being said. And so obviously you can listen while you're doing other things, but I think that's probably the best way to receive these messages. And so, you know, you look around and nature is doing just fine. We have a beautiful golden eagle, a biblical eagle that lives right out here on the farm. And just the other day, I was praying the morning prayers with my kids. And in the middle of the prayers, my kids jumped up screaming, the eagle, the eagle flying up above our heads. And you think about it, this virus hasn't affected the trees, hasn't affected the animals. This is a direct message to humanity. This is humanity's problem because in many ways, humanity is the problem. And just as always, it's like we have to learn the hard way. There is a way we are meant to be in the world. We can look at the world around us and we see beauty and harmony and the world working together. 
And then you see humans and it's like, well, how did they become so chaotic, warring against each other, polluting the planet, destroying the world, killing each other, fighting with each other? Now we realize how together we need to be. Now we're starting to realize that a new world needs to emerge, one that's cooperating, one that's loving, one that's together, one that really cares for one another. So I want to start today with the father of all prophets who holds all the keys, um, the book of Isaiah. Chapter 26 is such an important chapter. You know, it is the song of redemption. It is the song of the transition. I'm going to give you a sneak preview. In Isaiah chapter 20, verse 20, the end of the song. Go, my people, enter your rooms and close your door behind you. Hide for the moment until the wrath has passed. For behold, Hashem is going forth from his place to bring punishment for the sin of of the inhabitants of the world upon him. Friends, it's okay. Enter into your rooms and close your doors behind you. Hide for a moment. Something is happening now. There's nothing to be afraid of. We just need to wait now. Something is happening. But the beginning of this song starts off with joy. On that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judea. And so here I am singing this song of redemption to all of you around the world to know that it's a song of thanksgiving, a song of salvation. Everything is going to be all right. And so the end of days sometimes has a very scary connotation to it, but I think that that's a misreading. A new world is coming, but the new world is a great world. Nothing will be the same again. Everything will at least be a little bit different. And that's a good thing. Remember our world? Our world it was broken. It was sick, quite literally. We're being fixed now. Imagine how many people have been saved from car accidents since this coronavirus started. Imagine how many wars have stopped. People have stopped killing because of this coronavirus. The prophecies of the end of days is a new day, and it's a song of thanks. That's how we should begin this day. We should be thanking God for finally resetting this world. Now, he promised that he would never bring a flood again. He was never going to destroy all of humanity again. But what's happening now is a reset. And hopefully this time we will emerge not warring, but caring so I want to do two things before we really get into this chapter in the book of Isaiah. I want you to pause this video, or this audio really, and read the chapter. It's better if you read it beforehand, and then you'll have a little bit more insight as we're going along, because you know prophecies are not linear, and sometimes you'll be able to see things that you won't be able to see otherwise when you have the whole view. And so the second thing I want to do is I just want you to stop for a moment and breathe. Everything is going to be all right. Our world is beautiful. Our world is perfect. The natural order is still in place. There's a perfect balance of the galaxies and the precision of galactic orbits. The stars above and the grass below are moving perfectly without any human effort or intervention at all. And so humanity taking a break for a while and going behind closed doors, letting the world rest for just a little bit from our chaos might not be such a bad thing. We have a time now to be with our family. We have a time now to really delve into the word. Time to read. We're so busy now and we spend so much time watching little short videos on Facebook and YouTube now we have time to not be so distracted. We can actually open up a book again, and I would advise to open up the book of all books. But just know that everything is happening right now, and it's very scary. But scary is really just in the mind of the seer. It's just how we perceive reality now. 
But if we know what's happening and why it's happening, then we're building ourselves an arc, an arc that we can simply go into. When you think about closing the doors behind you that Isaiah here is referencing, I think um, he's really referencing the first redemption from Egypt. The first redemption from Egypt, each family had to stay inside their home. They had to mark their doorpost with blood, saying, "Uh uh-uh, there's some sort of angel of death that we can't see that's going from home to home now. I better put up my mezuzah. I better close my family in and stay tight. And we know that the first redemption from Egypt is a blueprint for the last redemption of the world. And so... If we know that God is going to save us, and Israel will be saved, and the world will be fixed, it's just now going through a surgery. <laughs> it's going through a process. You know, some people read the story of Noah's Ark, and they're, you know, they bring in their seventh grade scientific minds, and like, oh, but that's not logical, and biblical criticism, and there's a boat, and how could so many animals fit on the boat, and a flood that covered the whole world, and they ask all these, you know, scientific questions on the wisdom of the Torah. And it's like, folks, do we not see that this is like the existential reality of man? That man must prepare an ark because a flood will always come. Chaos is always at the door. Chaos is a part of this process. It always is. There will always be exile and redemption, chaos and then order. But when the flood comes, it is our job to prepare ourselves for the flood prepare ourselves spiritually, prepare ourselves physically, prepare ourselves emotionally. And Noah, the first uh, father of humanity, really after Adam, gives us the first story of get ready, build your ark, because a flood will come. So the floodwaters right now are rising up. But if we know that this flood is only here to purify and cleanse the world again, to fix the world, It's like the flood was like a giant mikvah purifying the world. What's happening right now is the world is being purified of man. Man's um, tendencies to covet, to kill, to war, all of those now. I don't see the Hamas shooting rockets on Israel right now because it might be Israel that actually finds this cure for this virus. And so get ready, take a break. Read the chapter, put it on pause, and know that the fundamental claim of the Bible is that this universe, who is one with God, who is an expression of his oneness, communicates with us. We can live in constant communication with our surroundings. Are we listening to the communication now? The world is communicating to us. And if the world can't listen, which Isaiah says very soon that many in the world will not be able to listen, We have Isaiah here to help us figure it out. He'll be the mediator between the universe and us in these times. So read chapter 26 and come back to this, and then we'll get get on our way. All right, folks, let's begin. I'm only going to read the chapter in English. I'm not going to bother reading the Hebrew and then translating into the English, although that sounds more biblical and it's a better way to do it. Um, If you would like to read the Hebrew, I actually find the Hebrew in this chapter a little bit more complicated sometimes, and sometimes the English actually opens up things that only later can I then read the Hebrew and then understand it from the blessed people that have translated this work for us. And so, here we go. On that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. The city is a stronghold for us. He will grant salvation to its walls and its outer walls. And so, Judea is somehow the place of salvation. Yerushalayim is in the mountains of Judea. The city is a stronghold. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone needs to run to Israel and run to Judea. What that means, though, is that Judea and Israel will serve as an example to the world of how to behave now. There is much fear right now around the world that everything is going to disintegrate into chaos. And who knows what man will do to other men around them. I heard that guns are running out in the United States of America. In Israel, that will not happen. The Jewish people in the land of Israel will care for one another. They will help one another. Instead of trying to steal from one another, there will be organizations and people and families that will be working together 
to go through this process. And when they say that Israel is our stronghold, it is the example of how to be strong in the world. He will grant salvation to us. Now listen to verse 2. Open the gates so the righteous nations, keeper of the faith, may enter. The being that relied on you, protect him with peace. Peace, for you did, for you did he trust, for in you did he trust. Now, if you read that, that is beautiful. Already the second chapter is inviting the righteous among the nations who are the keepers of faith, Shomer Emunim. There are righteous, holy nations that are out there in the world that love God, that love the Jewish people, that love Israel. We will open our gates and they are going to be coming soon. Just hold tight. Already the second verse is immediately not about Israel, not about Judea anymore. It's immediately a message to the righteous among the nations. Our responsibility ultimately is to the world. Biblical destiny is human destiny. Trust in Hashem forever, for in God Hashem is the strength of the worlds. Friends, to go through any transitional time, we have to have bitachon. It says it in Hebrew, batuach bitchu, over and over again. Trust. It's not just having faith in God, but having trust in God is saying, even if I don't feel faithful right now, I don't feel an encounter of God right now. I'm going to act based on the knowledge that I have faith in God. I'm going to take what I have and apply it in the world. I'm going to act with trust. It's not just an intellectual exercise of believing in this or believing in that theology. It's actually integrating it into our heart and living it out. He has... For he has brought down those who dwell on high in an exalted city. He has lowered it. He has lowered it to the ground. You know, the cities and skyscrapers, the progress of this world, the leaders of the world, Wall Street, Manhattan, London, Hong Kong, all these people that have prog prog just the progress and progress and whatever they need to do to continue to capitalize all of them are now being lowered down. He has brought it down to the dust. It is trampled underfoot. The feet of the poor, the souls of the meek. The way of uprightness is for the righteous. You see, you could be a billionaire in New York, or you could be a simple farmer in Tennessee. The coronavirus doesn't care. <laughs> it has made the high low, and the rich are with the poor, and somehow the playing field is 100% leveled. In fact, the simple farmer in Tennessee is a little bit safer, maybe a lot safer, than the rich person in the penthouse in Manhattan nowadays. And so everything is being turned upside down. The way of uprightness is for the righteous. All of this is to teach us that concept. Righteousness how to be straight in the world, how to be good in the world. God is good. God is order. And we must align ourselves with the way he wants us to be. Upright ones, straighten the circuit of the righteous. Even on the path of your judgments, Hashem will put our hopes in you. Your name and your mention, the yearning of our soul. My soul desired you during the night. So Isaiah is saying, listen, we may even be righteous. Uh-oh, there is a path of judgments that's going to happen. We're going to have to enter into a transitional time. But we put our hopes in you, God. We put our hopes and our yearning and our soul's desire is for you at night. For you at night. You know, there's the famous, beautiful pasuk in the Psalms for Shabbat, where it's good to give thanks to God in the daytime but it's faith at nighttime because the transitional time, the chaos, we just have no control. We don't exactly know where things are going. It's the nighttime and we can't see. This is the time to really have emunah. This is the time to really develop our relationship now. 
It's calling out for us to actually reach out to the universe itself beyond the veil, to reach beyond the one who created this universe, who is expressed in this universe, but there is someone out there that's calling out to humanity to realign itself, to really do tshuva. My soul desired you during the night. As long as my spirit is within me, I seek you out. When your judgments are against the land, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. It's amazing to think that in the time of Isaiah, where they didn't have electricity, they barely had running water. They didn't know how to build with arches. <laughs> it was like a very simple time. How could he even be speaking about the inhabitants of the world? And yet he's telling us there will be a global unity in Chinuch. God is going to educate the entire world in righteousness. And if we don't learn the right way, we're going to learn the hard way. And that hard way is going to be pretty dark and scary. But ultimately, the inhabitants of the world are going to learn, finally, how to live upright. Shall grace be granted to the wicked who did not learn righteousness? He acts with corruption in the land of the upright and does not see the exaltedness of Hashem. Hashem, when your hand is raised, the wicked do not see it. What does that mean, the wicked do not see it? Everyone's taught, the coronavirus is the enemy. We have to solve the coronavirus problem. The coronavirus isn't the enemy. Humanity is the enemy. We are our own problem. We have to see Hashem is speaking to us. His hand is raised up and the whole world is listening. But it says the wicked aren't going to be able to see it. They're just going to see chaos. They're just going to see Amalek. They're just going to see Mikre. They're just going to see happenstance. It's just happening now. There's no purpose. There's no meaning. There's no nothing here. And the wicked will not see it. And so now God is going to learn, teach righteousness for the entire world. May they see vengeance for your people and be ashamed, and also the fire that will consume your enemies. Hashem, arrange peace for us, even as you brought about whatever happened to us. Arrange peace for us. It's like things are going to be rearranged after this. But arrange peace for us around those that love you, those that want to walk in your ways. Hashem, our God, lords, other than you have ruled over us but it is only you whose name we mention. All of the idols that we have will be destroyed. We have put so many gods above our God, whether it be money, whether it be fame, where are our priorities really? I mean, Sivan Rahav Meir wrote such a beautiful article saying the two most viral videos in Israel are one of people complaining about being with their children, and two, Weddings that are happening across the country in coronavirus lockdown. So some people are getting married in the supermarkets and some people are getting married on the balcony and every family has different people on the balcony, less than 10 people. And it's like amazing. So the happiest thing that the Jewish people see is a wedding. And yet all we do about it is complain about being with our children. It's like, <laughs> what a special nation. Where are our priorities really? Right now, everyone has to be with their family, and probably that's going to be a transitional time. We're going to have to learn to actually live with our children. Our children are actually going to have to learn how to behave. Because, you know, when they come home in the afternoon and they have a B'nai Akiva and they have a certain lesson and their horseback riding lesson and they're going to their tutor, then, okay, give them a tablet for a couple of hours and we already got them to bed. All right, we don't really need to parent them. It's sort of on autopilot here. And now we're actually going to have to teach our children how to be in the world. And a beautiful lesson taught by Jordan Peterson, um, one of his life rules, is don't ever let your children do things that make you not like them. Because if you don't like them, other people won't like them either. So now, really stand on that principle. Give your children chinuch. They must behave in a way that adheres to your authority in the home, especially in these hard times. And if you stick to it, and don't just give them tablets and try to continue the old way of being. If you're going to fight this reality and try to keep it the old way, it'll just be more painful. Realize this is a new way of being now. It's a new way of being in your home. You are the father. There are ten commandments. They have a commandment 
to listen to your authority. Assert your authority now, and they must listen. They must behave now. And then you'll start to really enjoy time with your family. You'll enjoy the time with your children. This is a time of fixing. It's fixing all of us. So Hashem, we want only to mention your name. We want your principles, your values to rule over us and not our own desires and our own misplaced priorities. You have exalted your nation, Hashem. You have exalted the nation by whom you are honored. Even when you, are, even when you distance them to all edges of the earth, Hashem, in their trouble, they turned to you. They poured out their silent prayer when you reproached them. It's like amazing. It's like on one hand, he's saying God has exalted our nation and we are to be honored. At the same time, listen, we were scattered and dispersed and yet still the Jewish people have returned to the land of Israel and we haven't even begun to be exalted. Wait to see how Israel shines and emerges after this chaos. A new kingdom is about to arise here in the land of Israel and it will fix the broken world and we will be exalted above all other nations. Why? Because in our time of trouble, we turned to God. We are now fixing ourselves, even the most, maybe not the most secular of Jews in Israel. Everyone right now is reconnecting to their source. And the Jews outside of the land, I'm sorry that this has happened to you, that you didn't make Aliyah. Hold tight. If you can make Aliyah now, come home fast. If not, then you'll just have to close the door behind you and hold on. But I believe the safest place in the world for a Jew is in this land right now. We will be exalted above all other nations. As all the other nations descend into chaos, the Jewish people will work together. Like a pregnant woman, verse 17, close to giving birth, she is in travail, she screams in her pangs, so were we before you, Hashem. Like a pregnant woman, Tehillah taught me the most amazing Torah on this idea. The birth pangs of Mashiach. That's a concept all over Judaism. That before Mashiach comes, there's going to be birth pangs. But it's not just, okay, it's hurting, oh, this is uncomfortable. There's um, a message to us. That a woman that's giving birth, you know what? That baby is going to come out whether you like it or not. And you can try to fight it, but the best way to give birth is to choose to give birth, to open up, to let go, to let the process happen. That is exactly what we need to be doing now. We have to open up and let this process happen to us. Don't fight this. You will lose. Go with the flow, because where the flow is taking us is really, really good. We have conceived and gone into travail as if we had born wind. Salvations were not performed in the land and the wicked who dwell on the earth did not fall. May your dead come to life. May my corpse arise. Awake and shout for joy. You who rest in the dirt. It looks like at one point, oh my goodness, everything, everything is going to be lost. And then don't worry. It's all going to come back. We will arise from the ashes and we will arise from the dirt. If you look at verse 14, it says, They are dead, never to live, lifeless, never to arise. Therefore, you punished and destroyed them. It's like the wicked. I don't know how I skipped over this verse, but it's very much connected to verse 19. Verse 13 talks about Hashem. You have ruled over us, but it is only you whose name we mention. Others have ruled over us. They, the evil, are dead, never to live, lifeless, never to arise. Therefore, you punished and destroyed them. What does it mean that they're dead, that they're never to live? Uh, the secular, godless world, life doesn't really matter. Life is meaningless. They are life o -meter. If you just watch them, they're sort of like walking around zombified people. And they are literally just walking around dead. And now, finally, may your dead come to life in verse 19. May my corpse arise, the people that found no meaning in this world, that found no purpose. In this chaos, they suffer more than anyone else. But out of this chaos, they will emerge, those who realign. Awake again. Awake 
and shout for joy, you who rest in the dirt. That's all we're meant to be. We're meant to be awake. We're meant to be alive, be aware. How I, I know every bite that I take at every meal I enjoy, every hug from my children I cherish, every dollar that I have I cherish, every little thing now matters. I'm awake, finally. I was asleep for so long. You know, it's like amazing. I see myself and I see Ari as two of the most out-of-the-box people that I know. And yet this virus has taught me how caged I was in the box. I was a box I couldn't get myself out of. And now finally, I've been freed. I'm awake again. I'm thankful. It's beautiful. For your dew is like the dew that revives vegetation. May you topple the lifeless wicked to the ground and the people that find no meaning in this world, that find no love in this world, they won't be able to survive this. If they don't have a meaning greater than themselves, they will not find the power to survive. So go, my people, enter your rooms and close your door behind you. Hide for the moment until the wrath has passed. We're now entering into our rooms, and we're closing our door behind us. Someone sent me a funny meme. It says, your grandfather was called out to war. You're just being called to sit on your couch. You can do this. <laughs> and so that's all we have to do now. We just have to really listen. What are we meant to be in this world? How are we meant to be in this world? This is our time to soul search. The world is being fixed. We are being fixed. For behold, Hashem is going forth from his place to bring punishment for the sin of the inhabitants of the world. And so, may you all be blessed. Enjoy chapter 26. Tomorrow I'll be broadcasting together with Ari. I'm sure when he's on, it'll be a lot funnier and a lot more upbeat, I hope. <laughs> but until now, biblical destiny is human destiny. This is the time now to really go in deep. All of this process on the outside is a mirror of a process we are meant to be going through on the inside. This is all about fixing. And so this is our time to really let us be fixed. And so thank you to all of you out there for your prayers, for your support. Thank you for the encouragement. And um, you can email me anytime. If you found this valuable, share it with your friends. Get them to subscribe as well. I'm going to make a WhatsApp group, and people can just join it. I mean, we have an email list, but I don't want to blast out emails every day. I'll just probably blast it out on WhatsApp. And so if you want to this more, if you want to be on my broadcast list, so um, my phone number in Israel is plus 972 and so be blessed, stay healthy, stay inside, and stay tuned. Shalom from the mountains of Judea.